Okay, everybody. Somebody in the crowd sound the horn. We're about to pull the AP down. Sorry for the delay. Uh, my name is Summers Kemp, and I am your race chairman this year, and I want to be the first to congratulate you all for making it this far. It is, uh, as everyone knows, it's been a very long two years, and uh, the volunteers on the committee worked very hard to make this uh, a success for everybody, and I'd like to thank everybody for their patience and for their understanding as we bring back the Newport to Bermuda race in hopefully a spectacular fashion. So. Uh, someone once told me that Sponsors make it possible, and we were very lucky this cycle to have the interest and the support from a number of sponsors, uh, especially in the Newport area. Uh, at the top of the list, of course, is our title sponsor, uh, the Bermuda T Department of Tourism, uh, the BTA, the Bermuda Tourism Authority. Uh, go to bermuda.com. I think we're all going to do that tomorrow, so good job. Uh, I think everybody had a good time at Goslings last night. Hopefully, maybe. I guess nobody here. The Goslings party at uh, Newport Shipyard. I heard it was okay. I didn't get there. Uh, if sponsors make it possible, uh, volunteers make it happen. And I think we need to do a big round of applause for the people at Sailing And those that are part of Janet Garnier's team over there, they did an excellent job this week uh, under some pretty pressing time frames. Uh, the Bermuda Department of Customs and Immigration are still there, and they're still going to be there until 9 o'clock tonight to make sure that we get all the sailors through. Uh, so that when you clear into Bermuda, you can get to the bar as quickly as possible and start telling all those long tales. So. Uh, as you see, the list is long of sponsors, and we do have a, a presenting sponsor tonight, and we will get to that in a minute. But first, I want to bring up uh, two of my bosses. Uh, first up, from the CCA, uh, Chris Odorowski. Thank you, Summers, and uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome, skippers. Navigators and crew, and for you double-handers, skippers and navigators. Um, as Summer said, uh, an event like this, uh, in many many uh, circumstances, relies on the assistance of sponsors. And this year, we have lots of great sponsors, and we really appreciate that. It's a I've done the race a couple times, and it's amazing what goes into organizing and executing the race. I mean, there are more volunteers than there are boats in the end making everything happen. And I'd like to express our thanks to the New York Yacht Club for their race committee work and their hospitality. Barton and Gray for being a title sponsor today. And Bermuda, Bermuda Tourism Authority. So this is the 98th year that this race has been run in conjunction with the CCA and the Royal Bermuda Yacht Club. Royal Bermuda started the race, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or so years before that, and um, it's been quite something. So next cycle will be the centennial. So there's some very interesting yachts in this race. We got Columbia at 141 feet, at basically a replica of a Gloucester fishing schooner. And then we go down to the smallest boat in the, in the race finale, a J99 at 32.6 feet, apparently 0.1 feet just making the length requirement. Oak Cliff, I think, has produced five boats for this race. One is an all-female crew of basically teenagers. We have an 18-year-old skipper, uh, Sophia Comiskey. Sophia, are you here? And, and her crew consists of high school classmates all from Rhode Island. Pretty awesome. So we have uh, some multi-hulls and some really super fast boats. Um, it's going to be interesting to see 
you know, how, all they, how they do. There might be a course record set this time, who knows. I'm just ho hoping that the JetBlue A320 that we're going to be on Saturday morning gets there before the first finishers. We will see. We have a Volvo 70 from Canada, and there's, I think there's something like 17 countries represented here. It's in the, some of the announcements that went out. This uh, event is also being live streamed tonight, and, and the race. So, um, in the last um, email blast that came out, I don't know, an hour and a half ago, something like that, the conditions were, dis were being described as fresh to frightening for the first 36 to 48 hours. So I'm not sure what that means after that. Maybe you have to read a book after that, hoping for wind. But anyway, it should be a very interesting race. It's always a challenge. And um, we're just very happy to be a part of this. It's a, an integral part of the CCA. And the CCA this year celebrates its 100th anniversary in September. So I'd like at this point to introduce uh, the Commodore of Royal Bermuda Yacht Club, Craig Davis. And I'm um, looking forward to all of the Bermudian hospitality that I know is down there in Bermuda. Have a good race, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Um, having uh, met a good portion of you in the various lines over at Sail Newport over the last uh, two days. Uh, um, I'm not going to hold you up any longer than you need to be in this instance. I know that everybody is actually uh, a little bit tired of waiting around. So um, my main messages are welcome back. Uh, everybody is very welcome back to Bermuda on behalf of uh, the Royal Bermuda Yacht Club, its members, flag officers, and in fact just Bermuda in general. We're very, very happy to welcome the Newport Bermuda race back. Um, sail fast, sail safe, and get there, as Chris says, just after our JetBlue flight on Saturday morning would actually be great. Um, I would be remiss not in recognizing, as Summers and Chris have already done, our sponsors, both title and small sponsors, particular Bermuda Tourism Authority from the Bermuda perspective, and Goslings, which I know everybody will sit there and be seeing in Bermuda again. Um, and that's all I'm going to add at this moment. Just thank you for participating, thank you for coming, and welcome to Bermuda. Thank you, Commodores. Uh, I'd like to now bring to the stage uh, Mr. Doug Gray from Bart Gray, one of our presenting sponsors tonight. Doug? Thank you very much. All right. Is that on? Yeah. Everyone hear me? Thank you all very much. Um, my name is Doug Gray with Barton and Gray. We're um, honored to be sponsoring this race this year. Uh, we are um, a, a boating club, if you're not familiar with us. We have 75 Hinkleys under operation, all captained, and we've been doing it for about 17 years in 30 harbors. Um, so uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense for a guy who owns 30, 75 boats to be talking to you tonight. A, but actually, uh, sailing is a big part of our experience. We bring uh, thousands of people out to sailboat races every year. Yeah. The Bermuda race we've been at every year since we started the club 17 years ago and uh, pictured here. We just love it. Our members love it. We'll be taking many, many people out tomorrow. We've got four or five boats here. Um, and it's not just the uh, Bermuda race. We're here for Volvo Ocean Race. We're here for J-Class World Championships or any race we can. Also, just parents out watching Opti's. It's a, a big, big part of our experience. Yeah. Sorry. We're. Um, I'm also hosting the, uh, sponsoring the Opera House Cup this year in Nantucket, among many others. In fact, even right now, we're sponsoring SailGP in Chicago. Yeah. Um, so it's very exciting. We love it. Our members love it. We would like to bring this sport to as many people as we can. Uh, we also are building, uh, sorry about this, our own boat. Next slide, please. Uh, we're retrofitting a lagoon to be in our club. It's going to be our first sailing vessel um, in 17 years. Pretty exciting. Um, and we're also building a boat. 
Um, this boat is being uh, built for our members because it, uh, it, we kind of grew out of the he available Hinkley's to us, and we needed the boat to do quite a bit more than what we're avail is available. <coughs> Excuse me. We're calling it the world's uh, smallest mega yacht. It's a, a posh, little, beautiful 48-foot boat. Um, we're kidding it out with a big uh, beach club in the back, lots of open space, and uh, you'll see her in the waters this summer. The boat is designed by Doug Zern and uh, built by Boston Boat Works. They built many, many uh, performance sailboats. And the plug-in mold was built by Symmetrix in Bristol. Uh, you're familiar with them. They've built uh, American Magic and many other, many other boats. Uh, we will not be in Bermuda gr to greet you all down there, but we are looking forward to seeing you all down there. We've given you all a bag tonight. In the bag are two drink tickets. We'd love to buy you a drink when you get down there. Um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, I know you guys are going to have uh, a long trip down there and hopefully a really fun party when you get there. We wish you could be there. So best of luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. I'm going to have to talk to you later because I didn't get a bag. Okay, so we're going to go through, we've got, I'm just going to give you an overview of what we're going to get through tonight. We're going to have to talk about media, race committee, jury, communications, we're going to do a medical talk, and then I'm going to invite Craig Davis, the Commodore from the Royal Bermuda Club, to talk to you about how to approach Bermuda, how to approach Bermuda, Bermuda, and how to approach Bermuda in a safe manner. Okay, so I'd like to call out our top dog in media, uh, Mr. John Burnham. Thanks, Summers. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I'm co-chair of the race's media team with John Winder. Our team this year includes social media and website editor Kate Summers, press officer Sean McNeil, reporter Barbara Mack, and specialist talents, Daniel Forrester, Dave Reed, and Chris Love Productions. We've been working hard to bring the race to friends, family, and fans of the race. And I'll just mention a few key pieces of our coverage. Tomorrow's live stream starting line show on the water. Uh, your shore crew and other fans can find it right on the homepage. Uh, at BermudaRace.com, as well as on the race's YouTube channel. The Blue Nose Yacht Sales Tracker takes over once you're racing, uh, as well as the news updates that we post. You can find them both on the homepage, or your friends and family can. At the finish, we'll produce more news, results, video, and images, all shared through our social media channels. So, we'd like to encourage you to Keep sharing your stories with us. Uh, many of you have already. For photos and short video clips, if you have the bandwidth, go to bermudarace.com slash upload during the race or afterwards. If you're blogging for your friends during the race, please add media at bermudarace.com to your list and we'll post the highlights. If you're posting to social media, please tag us. And at RBYC, you're welcome to stop by the media office to share any uh, highlights that you have with us or join Sailing World's Dave Reed there for a video interview. We'll see you there. Thank you. Thank you, John. So, I'm sorry, we've had a technical issue with the clicker. I'm going to go back. Obviously, that's the Yellow Big Tracker, and this year it's brought to you by Blue Nose Yacht Sales, and we'd like to thank them very much as a sponsor. And prior to that, I believe you all received a skipper's bag that was provided by the Bank of Newport, and uh, I wish I could get one of those. I'd like to now invite Rear Commodore Claire Harrington who will be your race officer tomorrow. Thank you.
Thank you, Summers. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, great to see you all here. I'll be, uh, I'll be sending you all off to, to Bermuda tomorrow, so it's very exciting. Uh, it's always a great treat for us, um, especially after you know, eight or nine or ten, eight, eight or nine or ten classes have started, and we look to the south and see these, you know, this wonderful sight of a string of race boats heading toward Bermuda. It's, um, it's quite impressive. So uh, I'm just going to highlight a few items from the sailing instructions just to uh, make sure that uh, we all understand what um, what we need to do in order to make the start of the race um, seamless and to go smoothly. Um, the intention of the race committee is to uh, um, to signal the rendezvous location, the starting location, at 10 hundred hours, at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, a signal will go up at the Flagstaff at Harbor Court, and in addition to that, I will be on VHF 72 and will announce that location. The intention is to start you off Castle Hill. That's, um, that's the plan, and at this moment, I don't see any reason why we will adjust that, but, um, but that's, uh, that's what we're planning to do. Uh, we also in, intend to begin on time. So there, uh, barring any unforeseen circumstances, we should be starting uh, at the published uh, schedule, uh, which is the first warning at 1300. Um, so just a few things. Um, uh, you, um, I'm sure you've all read the sailing instructions. <laughs> And uh, you have this chartlet in your packet, and uh, this is where we will be setting up the orange box. Um, to the northwest is the signal boat, and there'll be a um, inflatable buoy, a yellow tetrahedron, and that will delineate the starting line. Um, that box is where only yachts that are starting should be. If you are not starting, if your sequence has not been uh, called, uh, then you are to stay away from that box. It's, um, it's a little tight and can get pretty congested on either side of the box. So, um, it, you know, it's, it's important to try to stay north of the box um, as, as best to your ability and not go in that area while you're not starting. That will give clear runway for the boats that are starting. Um, there is, um, in S uh, sailing instruction 6.3, there's very specific instructions on how you check in. Uh, please do not try to check in with the race committee on VHF 7.2. That'll be the working channel for the starting sequence. And for those of you who have um, done this race before, um, I've been the, PR, the um, race officer for the start of the race for the last several iterations of the race, so you know that I will talk you through the entire sequence. So I will tell you what the signals are, what it means, how much time you have left before your start, et cetera, et cetera. I'll be, try to be as very user-friendly as possible. In uh, the starting sequence is described in Sailing Instruction 7.1. It is a 10-minute sequence. So at the 10-minute mark, the, your class flag will go up. And then at the four, at uh, the four minute mark, four minutes to go, uh, the prep flag will be raised. At one minute before the start, the prep flag will be dropped. And then at the um, start, at the moment of the start, your class flag will be lowered. Okay, and that is your start. At that moment, the next class will be, a class flag will be raised. So it's essentially a rolling, a rolling sequence. So as the class flag comes down uh, for class number X, uh, the, the class Y will go up uh, and we will continue. Uh, unless there is a, um, a problem with, this, with the starting sequence or if there's some reason that we need to deviate from the starting sequence, we will uh, raise an AP, uh, an answering pennant. But again, I will, I will um, announce, I will broadcast on VHF 72 exactly what we're doing, how we're adjusting, and, and what your timing will look like. Um, please be advised that um, if, you're, if you're counting down to see what time in real time your start will be, be advised that classes one and two will start together and classes three and four will start together. So we've grouped one and two and three and four 
for, um, for uh, in the starting sequence. So if you're class uh, one, two, three, four, five, if you're class five, you will actually be the third start. So just, just be aware of that. Um, again, I will, talk through the, I will talk through the entire sequence. Um, uh, as I said, uh, uh, selling instruction 7.4 uh, instructs you to remain clear of this area. Uh, and this, this, chart can, this chart can be found in Appendix A. Uh, so you've got all this information, and I hope it's clear. And uh, we're really looking forward to a safe and uh, spirited starting sequence. And um, you know, please, please be careful. Be mindful of. Uh, be mindful that the current uh, will be flowing north to south, so it'll be pulling you toward the starting line. So uh, make sure you're adjusting for that. Um, it's an expensive. Um, it's expensive if you go over early, so just don't do it. <laughs> and then, um, yes, just be careful and don't hit the signal boat, please. Thank you. Uh, and that's it for me, and good luck, everyone. And uh, there's a question, I don't know, are we taking questions? Thank you, Claire. Yeah. Okay, so this is the important slide. Uh, we obviously have an international jury and panel and you may reach them by sending an email to that address uh, or there's a link on the Bermuda Race website which is going to show you on the official notice board what you can do. We're using racingrulesofsailing.org. Uh, you may submit a question. If you have a question from this evening, you may submit that on here and an answer will be posted uh, as soon as possible, most likely before the start time. Of course, once you get to Bermuda, if you want to write a protest on a napkin from the bar, I think they still accept that. I wouldn't recommend it, though. I'd like to now invite Coop to come up, and he's going to be the guy on the Fleet Communications office, and he will be answering the telephone or one of his team if you run into any issues. Coop? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Newport and one of the great races uh, in the sailing world. Uh, you will all have received uh, this blue laminated card in your skipper's bags. If you don't have one, uh, get one. Come and see me later on or email me, FCI Bermuda Race. It has all the information on it that you will need in order to communicate with us, the race committee, the Coast Guard, and various RCC and SAR uh, units uh, along the course of the race. I plan on transmitting the commander's weather two times a day, once about 0800 and the second one about 1900. If that changes too dramatically, I will make a note of it so that you know when to go to your phone and pick it up. Um, we all go ocean racing for various reasons, largely to get away from being told what to do by someone. In that vein, I'm not going to tell you what to do. If you have some situation on your boat and you call me, us, my volunteers, uh, we will talk to you and we will try to ascertain the, the degree of urgency of your situation, uh, but we are not going to tell you that you must do X, Y or Z. You are on the spot and do all of the things that you've been taught to do in your safety at sea seminars. Um, it's a little bit like reefing. If you think you have to, you probably do. My last detail is, uh, as you may have figured out over the years since satellite phones became a thing, their audio quality is only a little bit better than single sideband on a good day. Therefore, when you're calling us, with the exception of about the six or seven pairs of boats with the same name, uh, you know who you are. Um, I'm not going to need the sail number, simply the name of the boat. If you're one of the pairs, please do give me the sailboat and don't feel bashful about repeating either of them. I don't need to know who you are, who's calling me, I just need to know the name of the boat. Um, and I need to know what you want to tell me pretty quickly. 
Um, when you're speaking, please bear in mind that you're not having a conversation with your 16-year-old daughter. We need you to, sorry, sorry girls, Lincoln girls, I didn't really mean that. Um, I need you to be speaking quietly, clearly, concisely, and in a way that you would like other people to be speaking to you over the satellite phone in the event you wanted to understand what they were saying. You don't have to be like the BBC announcer reporting the death of King George V, but that is a good template. Thank you and have a great race, folks. I hope I don't hear from you. Thank you so much. Okay, now I'd like to invite Dr. Barbara Masser to come and give our medical speech. Thank you very much. Excellent, so welcome. Um, my name is Barbara Masser. I'm an emergency physician uh, at the Beth Israel in Boston, and this is my sixth race. Um, very excited to be here. Sorry about that. And uh, very excited that you all are back here after a, what has been a very tumultuous few years. Um, today I'm going to spend about five minutes, and I just want to let you know how to get in touch with me, when to get in touch with me, when you do get in touch with me, what type of information um, I'd like you to provide if you can. So reviewing this, you all have this on the blue sheet. Uh, the primary method of reaching me is by a U.S. cell phone, and that's my number there. Uh, we do have a backup physician in the event that you cannot reach me directly. His name is Dave Schoenfeld. He's an emergency physician and director of EMS at our institution. He's excellent. He's also a sailor. So he will be able to help you in that moment and then pass it on to me. Um, in the event, we do have a third backup. Um, fortunately, to date, this hasn't been necessary or been used in any of the previous races. But um, it is a landline. It is the Department of Emergency Medicine. It's the ED at the Beth Israel. Uh, and I have notified the docs that are working during the period of this race that you may, they may get a call from a sailboat. They'll do the very best to help you and then uh, directly pass it on to me. But hopefully that will not be necessary and you'll get in touch with me personally directly. Um, I would like to mention that my email is on there as well. And as he mentioned with respect to the satellite phones, it can be very difficult to communicate. Um, oftentimes what will happen is someone will call directly and then we'll have subsequent uh, communication via email on a more of a scheduled basis in terms of follow-up. You can also, if the situation is not as super time sensitive, you can also email me as the initial point of contact. Uh, I check the email all the time during the day and sadly most of the time during the night as well. So you're likely to be able to get in touch with me quite quickly through email. Um, one thing I wanted to say is, and this is probably the most important thing that I will say, if you have on board a, an event that is of an obvious serious life threat, and this is someone who is unconscious and not responding, obvious large trauma, significant bleeding, someone who cannot breathe, someone who has had crushing chest pain, something where it is extremely serious and an obvious life threat, your first call should be to the Coast Guard. Call the Coast Guard directly and they will walk you through and deal with that type of situation. If you have something that is not in that category, that's where I come in. Minor illnesses, moderate illnesses, trauma, questions, that's when you contact me and my job is to walk you through it, support you, and figure out what we need to do. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not have, having a little trouble with this. Um, okay, so when you, whoops. Oh, right. So on board, uh, for each crew member, it's important if you could just have some of their basic medical information. That includes um, their medications with dosages, any allergies that they have, their medication, their medical problem list, surgeries, problems, histories. It's really important to have this as a reference because sometimes the crew member is not in a position to remember this or tell, you, uh, tell this to you at that time, and it's really important for me to know. Um, okay, so when you do call me and we do speak, these are a few of the things that I'm going to ask you to let me know. First and foremost, what is the level of consciousness of your crew member? 
Are they awake? Are they alert? Are they confused? <clears throat> are they sleepy? Anything along those lines. That's the first uh, thing I want to know. And then tell me what the problem is. What are they complaining of or what was the injury? And then what happened? You know, it's been three hours, they've vomited five times. Uh, the boom hit them in the head and they have a bleeding clot. Just tell me what happened, what the events are. Um, and then anything pertinent to them in terms of their medical problems. Um, and then this is where, if you do have some folks with medical skills on board, this is very helpful. Some degree of vital signs are really useful. And something as simple as a heart rate, um, a respiratory rate, how quickly are they breathing every minute. Uh, if some of you have on board oxygen saturation meters, um, that's also a helpful piece of information. So if you can get that, that is really useful. And then anything that you've done. We gave them this medication. We stabilized them in this way. We moved them from this area of the boat. Anything along those lines are very helpful. Um, along with distance, where you are, where are you from in terms of an air or sea rescue, um, medications and medical equipment on board, and then again, any medical skills of the staff that you have. So I'm sorry, I do have to mention COVID. It seems to be all I do these days for the last few years. But um, I just wanted to let you know that if you have issues around COVID, I'm here to support you from a medical symptom um, standpoint. If you have questions, I'm happy to field those. Um, but in terms of deciding whether or not to proceed to Bermuda or go home or the quarantine considerations, reporting considerations, that is sort of an individual captain decision. And the last thing I wanted to say which is, um, this is also pretty important. If for some reason we have a medical event on board and I'm helping you and we're managing it and unfortunately things are getting worse and not better and we get to a point where we're concerned and we think we really need to probably get this crew member off the boat or they're getting into more of a life-threatening situation, we're going to transfer care. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is to call the Coast Guard directly. We've reviewed this with our Coast Guard contacts. You're gonna call the Coast Guard directly and establish a line of communication with them directly. I will also call them and let them know what's happened and what's going on, but at that moment in time, we will, I will transfer care to the Coast Guard, and this way we have a single point of communication and a single decision maker in terms of the next events for managing this situation. Um, that is it. Uh, I'm happy if you have any questions before or after the race, please feel free to you know, give me a, uh, send me an email or give me a call. Um, if you have any questions after this uh, uh, presentation, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful race. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Can we go to the next slide? And now the next one. Here we go. The interesting part. Uh, Commodore Davis is back to tell you how to approach Bermuda. All right, so how many people here are repeat visitors? <laughs> and that's what we like to see in a lot of ways. So in all fairness, most of you have actually done this race more than once and will have seen all of these various pieces here. The key message, of course, is let's not hit anything. Let's make sure we've kept a good watch out on approach to Bermuda. I know that everybody at that stage, having done the race myself a couple of times, is very keen to see any side of land, any side of marks. So I don't have to remind everybody, yes, there's a very large area of reef line to the north of Bermuda. Please, please, please make sure you're keeping a watch out for the appropriate marks, especially if there's inclement weather or if there's some issue with electronics. Let's make sure everybody's keeping a good watch out. Um, at night, Gibbs Hill is obviously a, a, a visible at approximately 26 miles, and St. David's approximately 15 miles in good weather. So those are usually something you're going to see first, particularly at night, and during the day it would be Gibbs Hill or the headland at the east end of the island. Next slide. Um, kitchen Shoal. So again, most of you will have seen these. Not from this close is my hope, and please try not to be this close again either. Um, obviously, uh, uh, the kitchen is one of the, the waypoints that you actually, if you're in the sailing instructions, um, this is where you actually make contact with the finish line team on VHS 72. Um, reference uh, SI-12-3, who'll be monitoring your approach. Finish line site. Again, again, you've all seen St. David's Lighthouse. It hasn't actually changed dramatically. Um, 
It hasn't moved, that's correct. And uh, it's the most obvious landmark in the area, the finish line. I just have to actually, and most, re most of the reason why I have this slide up here is the dedicated team of volunteers under Past Commodore Leatrice Oatley that actually man that station, waiting for you. We are still doing old school, making sure they are there. They're on watch for the entire time of the actual uh, uh, expected finishers. So uh, um, really, if you run into them on the dock later in the day, later in the week, please say thank you for them. Finish line itself. Um, again, this is all delineated in the sailing instructions. So again, I'm certain that everybody in this room has read them. Looking around for nodding of heads, seeing none. Right, fair enough. Um, so obviously, uh, reference uh, sailing instruction 12. Finish line is the intersection of the green and red sectors of St. David Lighthouse. Um, I'm not going to go into all the specific details of the bearings, etc. It's all listed in the sailing instructions. You don't need me, me to actually tell you about them again. There are some key points, though, to remind you. The buoys that are there are not necessarily exactly on station. That is stated in the sailing instructions. The buoys do not have AIS on them. Again, stated in the sailing instructions. Um, so make sure that when you are crossing the line, you proceed well through the line, take a left-hand turn, and go around to actually make sure that you have completely cleared the line. Take the time of your own crossing um, and make sure you've entered that time on your certificate of compliance. Do not go back through the finish line. Please avoid other finishers who are in the immediate area. Common sense should prevail. Next slide. After finishing, Everybody wants to get to the bar as fast as possible. That's the general gist, regardless of time of day and whatever the conditions are. The standard rule, and I say rule is in a, in a lower case in this instance, has been not to transit the channels into Hamilton late at night or particularly in inclement weather late at night due to the risk to you and your crews. Um, I have to reemphasize that that is still the recommendation of all parties. I also know that most of you routinely ignore that particular small rule. Um, what I will say is that you know, after you have actually uh, uh, done your communication with the finish line uh, committee, which is required again under SI 12.5C, you then need to contact Bermuda Maritime Ops on channel 16 to make sure that they've registered, or 1627, uh, to make sure you've registered in Bermuda waters. Um, again, I'd like to recommend that you refrain from coming down the channels in the dark without, uh, 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 if you're not comfortable going down those channels. But uh, as I say, I have a sneaky suspicion mostly you will ignore that. Next one, slide please. Dundonald Channel. So this is just, uh, again, most of you have done this race. You have probably been down Dundonald Channel plenty of times. But remember to honor the marks. Please do not cut in even though you think that you can cut in after 38 and take a hard left and, and head for Hamilton, particularly if you're in a tight race with a mate of yours next to you, um, please honor the channel marks and just come in through that way. It is much safer for all parties. Um, the RBYC and the RHADC marinas will be actually monitoring the race tracking. Who was doing the race in 2018? So um, again, 2018, we had a challenge with Bertha. Um, I think everybody in the room will recall that debacle. We are not planning on having that debacle again. We're putting on the appropriate resources to make sure that doesn't happen at the other end. And we're paying a lot more attention to tracking than we did at the last time. That being said, it is communication is key. So please contact, particularly as you're approaching or just inside the Two Rock uh, Passage, make sure you've reached out to the appropriate marina that you've made your booking with. I will say for the record that unless there is a large clump of boats that are come in at and are into sorry Hamilton Harbor at you know 11:30, 12 midnight, the between the mid hours of midnight and 6 a.m., we are not planning on berthing. I say repeat, this is a, a very clear piece because this was part of the problem last time. We birthed people who shouldn't have been in the spots they ended up getting birthed. So between midnight and 6 a.m., unless there is a large volume of boats, in which case, as long as it's safe, we will put on people to berth you. However, if it is midnight to 6 and it's only one or two boats that are coming through, please be prepared to drop your hook in Hamilton Harbor. I know the hooks are all stowed, 
very deeply in many cases. Please make sure you are aware if you are approaching in that timetable, neither the RBYC or our HADC marinas are going to be available between midnight and 6. At 6 a.m., you will be berthed primarily in the order that you've arrived. I say primarily because there are certain obvious exceptions. If you are a large boat that has a berth plan on the inside of the marina, you may be asked to wait if there's two small boats right next to you to get you in. But the situation that occurred last year, or sorry, 2018, where people felt they were being skipped, we will make sure we're in full communication with you. Um, uh, just a reminder, uh, the RBYC Marina will be on channel 74, and our HADC Marina will be on channel 73. Council Harbor. So just a reminder for everybody, again, you've been here plenty of times. The RHADC Marina is at the far eastern end of Hamilton Harbor, and the RBYC Marina is in the middle. Sorry, we jumped a slide in there. It's all right, I don't think we need to go back. You guys are, are fully familiar with that stuff. Um, so I'll just touch on uh, uh, quarantine and other pieces with it. Um, the traditional Bermuda Customs uh, uh, group for clearing customs in Bermuda will be available the same hours that it has traditionally been between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Um, they do allow for all vessels that have done all the pre-clearance work up here. You've done the hard part. Your skipper or person in charge will be gathering the passports of the crews that actually have gone through the pre-clearance up here and taking them as the individual going up to do the pre-clearance, just as it always has been, keeping it relatively quick. The crews are permitted to stay in the environs of the club. Please do not leave and make this message very clear to your crews. Please do not allow any of your crews to leave the club property, either RBYC or RHADC, or in fact, if you're birthing at Princess, um, making sure that you stay in the environs until you have been released by Bermuda Customs. I cannot emphasize that enough. In the small exception of people who have not been able to clear pre-clear immigration here in, in Newport and have to clear in Bermuda, the actual individual will need to go with their passports and the skipper or person in charge to the Customs Immigration Group at the same time. Just want to make sure that's very, very clear. Um, yes, and Customs uh, uh, appreciates it if they're not drunk by the time they get there, just as a note. Um, they can get drunk right afterwards. The um, yachts and crews, uh, uh, sorry, yachts are obviously required to fly your, uh, um, your quarantine flag until you've actually been cleared. That's standard protocol. Uh, vessels that are berthing at the RHADC, uh, it's my understanding that they're running a small shuttle for the few people that will need to get to the RBYC to do the customs piece, just for clarity. Um, that covers those pieces. So berthing. Um, I'm wearing my RBYC hat for the present moment, obviously. Uh, um, if you are directed by one of the uh, boat tender crews to the south wall, west wall, or east wall, or north berths, you have a general idea of where those are. Um, should not be uh, terribly complicated, particularly for those of you who have been before. The next slide, however, is actually quite important. So I put this in very big letters this year just to make sure everybody's aware of it. There are two shallow spots. Regardless of how many times you've been to Bermuda and berthed at the RBYC, please, please, please do not disregard the directions of the tender and docking crews if they're trying to warn you to stay out of a shallow area. I was physically present for at least one skipper last uh, cycle that actually said, oh, I've been here 10 times. I know I can get my boat over this. Clunk. So um, we want you to have a safe race. We want you to make sure that you don't have damage to your boats. Please, please, please honor the actual uh, instructions that are provided to you. Obviously, you are in charge of your yachts. There's no question about that. However, they're there to help and guide and keep your boats safe. Next slide. So quarantine pieces. So we've spoken about this uh, a little bit in previous bits. And, uh, several people have asked me this in the queues over the last two or three days. 
Um, Bermuda Customs, you are not allowed to clear Bermuda Customs in St. George's. One exception. If there's been a medical emergency on board and the decision of the medical authorities has been to actually redirect the boats to St. George's for example, if there's a uh, uh, evacuation on board or some other uh, situation that's actually come up, that's about the only way that that might change. Bermuda Customs is operating at the RBYC for the race. Should I fly my Q-Flag? Yes, obviously. Can we leave the boat? I think I've touched on this before. I don't need to go through it uh, again. Next slide. Fuel. Um, most skippers, and I say most because there's still a stack that was left at the uh, uh, desk when I left uh, Salem Newports uh, an hour and a half ago, or a little bit longer, was issued a, uh, what they've called a duty-free uh, fuel voucher. Um, Bermuda government has offered this uh, a particular waiver, uh, a tax waiver on fuel for the competitors of the Newport Bermuda race. Um, technically, it's not for the locals. <clears throat> three boats that are in there. Um, however, I don't know whether you actually got one from them. I'd take advantage of it if you wish, <laughs> and if you got one. Um, the fueling station for this will be at the uh, Royal Naval Dockyard, um, and they've set up uh, two days. Uh, you will need to book a slot for that uh, a time period. I repeat, each competitor or skipper, uh, a person in charge, will need to actually book the process is uh, uh, written out also on the official notice, or sorry, the official website. If you look under, I believe it's Bermuda Logistics and the red box on the right hand side of the page, it actually gives you the uh, a full instruction sheet that you would actually need to follow. Um, so again, I encourage you to make those bookings as soon as you possibly can to make sure that it's all taken care of. Uh, next slide. So big change. I say big change. Uh, those of you who were there for 2018 uh, will remember that we had the use of a green building over on the, the uh, east, sorry, western side of the RBYC and it allowed us to spread things out completely differently. That building is being renovated into a restaurant. It's not there yet, so don't get excited, uh, but maybe for the next cycle. Um, and we no longer have access to it. It's meant we've had to rejig all the spaces around the club to be able to handle the, uh, uh, our guests. In particular, the, uh, which is the most important one for you arriving, will be the location of the customs and the duty desk, which is where you have to fill in, or, sorry, hand in all your compliance documentation per the sailing instructions. Um, there is an ex exterior staircase. The Calabash Lounge is located just on the uh, western side of the bar, the main bar, the one with the varnished bit on the sides. So if you uh, um, are lost and are looking for it, there will be signs, but basically up those stairs and through the glass doors up there, you will be at the duty desk and H or, sorry, Department of Customs officials will be there as well. Um, please do not try to go into the old trophy lounge for clearing. You will not find anybody there to help you. Um, this is also the area where customs will be set up for uh, clearing uh, upon departure from Bermuda. So I believe they will be offering those hours on primarily the Saturday, Sunday when most people tend to go. And lastly, um, for my slides, uh, trash and recycling. Um, goes without saying, we're all sailors. Um, we all live uh, as much as we possibly can on or, or under, in some cases, the water. Um, and we want to make sure we do the right things when it comes to trash and recycling. It's also imperative for everybody to make sure that they actually dispose of things in the right places and do not, please, please do not just leave them on the dock for somebody else to deal with. Please police your own uh, uh, trash, etc. cetera. Um, those of you who have been before will be familiar with the dumpster set up in the, the alleyway at the side of the club. Um, there are recycling in Bermuda. Uh, does actually exist for tin, glass, and aluminum. Um, unfortunately, we are not switched on enough at this moment to be able to recycle other things, much as we'd like to. Um, and separately, two items to do with the bar. Uh, we won't be doing plastic straws, etc. and Gosling's have very kindly uh, uh, partially sponsored uh, reusable cups. So the reusable cups, please take it with you if you wish. But when you come back to the bar, please bring it and use it. Please don't 
take a, a cup away and then leave it somewhere and go back and get another one. They are, there are only so many of them. It's an astonishingly high number. I want to say it's something like 15,000 cups. But I can promise you from what I've been told, we'll blow through that in one night if people are not sitting there and actually uh, uh, being smart about this. So please, 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 if you're not planning on going back to the bar, leave it in an area at the end of the bar so they can actually be recycled or take it with you and bring it back the next time. And I believe that is it for the logistics for the Bermuda end. Thank you and look forward to seeing you in Bermuda. Thank you, Craig. Okay, finishing up with the sponsors, I know this is, um, this is the end. We're here. One more thing to do. We've got some naughty boats. Uh, I know everybody got instructions on how to turn on their tracker when they pick them up. The following boats have not turned them on yet, and they need to do so tonight. And you need to place it on your boat. Group five, Oak Cliff Gray, Meridian, and Rhiannon. Those boats need to turn on their trackers right away and mount them on their boat, please. The next two boats I need to see at the front Oh, sorry, let me rewind. If any of those boats are positive that they've turned their tracker on and it was blinking and working, then please come and see me at the end of this presentation, which will be not right now, I'll tell you when. <laughs> Nanook and Windrush, I need to see you uh, or a representative from your boat after this. Uh, we need to change your tracker because your batteries are low. Most probably because you had it in the back of a car for a week. Uh, the next three boats, I'd also like to change your trackers because they haven't been transmitting for some time this afternoon. I'm not sure whether you've been on the highway and it's in, been in the trunk of your car or what, or maybe it's just dying on the back of your boat. Those boats are Resolute 4, Warrior 1, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced this, Q-U-E-R-E-N-C-I-A, Covencia? Okay, so I need to see those or a representative from them. If you're watching this on live stream and nobody from your boat is actually here, then you need to get in contact with me, chairman at BermudaRace.com, or call me. I'm pretty sure my phone number is everywhere on the internet these days now. Okay, so this is the time when I'd like to wish you all well. Thank you for taking part in the race. We will, this is not the end of the presentation. We now have a weather briefing. If you wish to stay for the weather briefing, then you may. I'm gonna give everyone else who wishes to not stay two minutes to get out. Thank you.